Street starts right now. It was inside this restroom at a Southtown daycare where 25 young students and staff hid in what they feared was a life or death situation as a suspect was trying to get inside. It's not a light beat. Staff takes us through those tense moments and the charges SAPD is giving to the suspect. But first tonight, we start here. One man is dead and a woman is fighting for her life after what police are calling an attempted murder suicide. Happened around 7.30 tonight. The night team's Avery Everett is live on Champlain Drive where she's spoken with police and neighbors. Avery, what do you know? Well, Stephanie, police are still actively searching this street here on the northeast side and neighbors along Champlain say they're shaking up, shaken up rather after what happened tonight. Police did confirm to us that one man is dead and a woman is in critical condition in the hospital after what they're calling an attempted murder suicide. That man was 53 and the woman is 51. We don't yet know their relationship as police say they're still investigating. There were two other people who were inside the home when it happened. Police tell us one is a minor and the other is over 18. Now they ran to neighbors after the shooting happened, asking for help, and they're now talking to the San Antonio Police Department. But there aren't really many other details when it comes to this scene tonight, but neighbors did say they found it alarming that this was an attempted murder-suicide, and they say it's because specifically that these have been happening and seem to be happening rather more often across the city. I mean, just a couple of weeks ago, think about that house fire where four people were found dead on the southeast side among multiple other cases that have happened so far this year. As we learn more details about this scene tonight, we'll keep you updated on KSAT.com. Reporting live, I'm Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Avery, thank you for that. Also tonight, a warning, and that is to check your prescription medicine. You know, when you get sick, you go to the doctor, he or she gives you a prescription, you take it to the pharmacy, and then you get your meds. But what if you get the wrong medicine or the wrong dosage? That's what happened to some local parents. They were about to give their little girl medicine when they noticed that something was off. And what they found out should really be a lesson to all of us here tonight. Our Patty Santos walks us through what happened and also what you should do when you pick up a prescription. Yeah, Stephania, the parents of little Lainey Chasting were getting ready to give her her first prescription medication to treat her infantile hemangioma. Doctors prescribed her a medication which slows down the heart rate. I was pretty nervous about giving it. I kept second guessing myself. But just as Erin Chasting was preparing the dosage, something wasn't right. So she asked her husband, Chase, who has a background as a registered nurse. And she brought the syringe to me in bed and had it drawn up and said, hey, uh, this is like a full syringe. This is a lot. Double checking his math and then calling the pharmacy, they realized the dosage was wrong. This is the uh, recent prescription that they provide us, which is the correct dose, which is 1.5 mLs twice a day. Mm -hmm. This is the incorrect one, which is gives 6 mLs twice a day, which would be four times the maximum dose for this. They're grateful they caught the pharmacist's mistake, but now want to warn others. A lot of people receive serious medications, and we just felt like as soon as this happened, our responsibility is to let people know, hey, you should double check this. <laughs> Melanie Stone, doctor of public health and assistant professor of family and community medicine at UT Health San Antonio, says human error and a complex health care system are part of the problem. I can say we probably all had experiences with prescriptions maybe not being written as clearly as they should be. Stone is a health literacy expert. She says anytime patients pick up new prescriptions from their pharmacists, take a minute to double check the labels in front of the medical staff. Use that time. Ask them, you know, what is this medication for? How do I take it? Even if it's written there on the label, have the pharmacist go over it with you verbally. She says even if you're already at home, call the pharmacist with concerns, especially if it's for a child. Don't be afraid to ask questions and speak up because it is your health, your family's health, and you have to be your greatest advocate. And while we reached out to the pharmacy for a statement right now, we're not naming the pharmacy because it is not clear where the breakdown happened and who's responsible for this mistake. But Stephania, really, this kind of mistake can happen at any drugstore. And that's why the bottom line is all of us need to just be more careful. We have some uh, resources on our website to help people out. And also ask our doctors, not just the pharmacists, when they give us a prescription. But I want to go back to that little girl because the, the whole thing for this is that she was sick and her parents were 
giving her medication. We saw a video of her a moment ago. How is that little girl doing tonight? She's doing just great. She's six months. She's happy. And the parents have decided not to give her the medication as of right now until they really need to. Okay. Patty, thank you so much for that. Switching gears now, a second man is in jail tonight in connection to a drug deal that turned deadly. We want to show you 26-year-old Jacob Kawazoe walking in front of our cameras. That was just a few hours ago. San Antonio police say that he and another person shot and killed a man at Pearsall Park. Now, Kawazoe is charged with murder. The other suspect who was arrested is 32-year-old Angus Okles Talbot. He was taken into custody on Monday and is facing a murder charge. San Antonio police are saying that both of those men have criminal histories. Now, warning before this next story, because the details here are just upsetting, really disturbing. Tonight, we're learning more about that deadly bus crash up in Bastrop that killed a little boy and a man. We have dash camera video that shows that concrete truck slamming into the school bus. We've also learned that the driver of that concrete truck allegedly admitted to doing cocaine the morning of the crash and smoking marijuana the night before. So let's go to a portion of that video on the left side of the screen. You see it there. The concrete truck comes into view and then clips the school bus. The bus flips over, rolls. That's where we stop the video right there. We just want being mindful and respectful of the fact that we lost two lives here. Five year old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya was one of the two people who was killed. Now, what the video doesn't show you is that a car hit the back of the bus and the driver of that car 33-year-old Ryan Wallace was also killed. 53 people were hurt in that accident. And by the way, that bus did not have any seatbelts. A former teacher at Comfort High School is accused of having an inappropriate relationship with a student and then giving her a morning after pill. So this right here is 38-year-old Ty Rexroad. According to arrest paperwork, he had a physical relationship with a student and was worried that she could become pregnant. Investigators also believe that they may have found another student who was being groomed by Rex Road. According to Kendall County authorities, more charges in, the, charges in this case could be coming. Comfort ISD says that Rex Road taught at the high school for two years, but then resigned this past February. Ten minutes, ten minutes that felt like an eternity. That is how staff at a Southtown day, daycare described the moment that they and dozens of young students sat in lockdown as a woman was trying to break into that facility. The night team's John Paul Badajas walks us through those 10 moment, test, tense moments that ended with an arrest and no injuries. So they're asking us like, where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? So I just have to hold him and be like, it's okay. They're gonna be here, just stay with me. It was moments of pure panic. 25 students ranging from 16 months to five years old and five staff members at Green Acres Child Care had to go into lockdown. The glass had shattered to where it was up to the point of like halfway to this carpet. Jennifer Cervantes explains just before nap time, a woman tried breaking into the daycare building and in the process shattered more than eight windows. She started like banging on the door like she's determined to come in the center. San Antonio police believe the suspect was having a mental health issue at the time and that her kids were in the daycare being held captive. I walked right here because you're right here, you can see the window and you just saw glass coming in. While that was happening outside, staff brought the kids into this restroom. Jennifer says at the time they couldn't see the suspect, but they still heard the chaos. We thought she was inside. And in that moment, that's when all of us were like, if she comes in, we're, all the teachers are by the door. All the kids were never, like, are, we were covering the door. If anything was going to happen, they was going to go through us first. Luckily, that person never made it inside. Police arrested the suspect for criminal mischief and for an active warrant for possession of a controlled substance. Now the family run center is picking up the pieces and trying to move forward. Truthfully, scared, worried about what could have happened to them and she would have gotten him. Maybe she had a knife or a gunner or something. The owners tell us they'll welcome students back on Tuesday with an Easter party, but then the rest of the week will be dedicated to safety trainings with kids. They say previous trainings is what kept everyone safe yesterday. The Green Acres Child Care Center, Chapo Barajas, KSAT, 12 News. We're certainly glad that everybody was okay there. All right, switching gears now. In less than an hour, the curfew is going to be lifted on City Park, so people are going to be allowed to set up for camping this Easter weekend, which, of course, is a tradition here. At 11 p.m., families can go into 11 different parks across the city. We want to show you video earlier today from earlier today at Brackenridge Park. 
when we were there, we saw people picking out their spots. Overnight Easter camping is a longtime tradition in San Antonio. The park curfew, by the way, goes back into effect Sunday at 11 p.m. Huge crowd, huge crowd is expected tomorrow downtown to watch the annual Passion of the Christ. The Passion Play begins at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. Now this year, the procession is going to begin at Travis Park. Parishioners from San Fernando Cathedral are going to reenact the Passion. The play portrays Jesus as he's condemned to death and carries the cross, including the Stations of the Cross. It's going to end with Jesus being crucified on the steps of the San Fernando Cathedral. KSAT's going to live stream the entire Passion Play on KSAT.com. One San Antonio chef is helping to reimagine an American fast food classic. So coming up tonight on the Night Beat, we're walking you through how this all happened and how you could see a San Antonio spin on the Crunchwrap. A quirky West Side convenience store is calling it quits. In a social media post, owners of the Jefferson Bodega announced that the store's closing after five years, citing, quote, new horizons and fresh challenges. They also thank the community for their support over the years. Also, Kroger. Yeah, it's leaving San Antonio again. In 2022, the company launched an online-based grocery delivery service in the Alamo City and leased a massive facility over on the northeast side. More than 160 people in the area work for them, and now that facility is going to close on May 25th. Okay, different topic now. Question. When you think of Taco Bell, which food comes to mind? The chain says that most people think of the Crunch Wrap Supreme, my personal favorite, by the way. Well, soon that menu item could change as the night team's Avery Everett shows us one San Antonio chef is reimagining that fast food classic. In Jennifer Dauberton's kitchen, creativity is a key ingredient. I'm always thinking about what would be fun to do with food. Behind these kitchen doors at Best Quality Daughter, Dauberton cooks American classics with a twist. The Taiwanese popcorn fried chicken, which is like a chicken nugget. Pulling inspiration from places across the world. Chinese influence, Taiwanese influence, Thai and Southeast Asian influence. And cities a whole lot closer to home. Lots of like South Texas influence just because I've spent most of my life in San Antonio and in South Texas. Her flair is hard to find. I just wanted it to be like a fun restaurant that was almost of an immersive experience when you eat here. It's gotten her repeat recognition as a 2023 and 2024 James Beard Award semifinalist. I was always into cooking and I was always into food. Her remix recipes are taking her to the next level and a new chain of restaurants. I have no idea how I got on the Taco Bell's radar. Dauberton is one of three chefs across the country kicking off Taco Bell's TBX program. The goal is to support and promote emerging culinary talents. Each chef will put their own spin on the Crunch Wrap Supreme. I just want to have fun with it. She's already come up with new flavor combinations. Can you reveal to us what I, I, twist you're I, taking? I'm not at liberty to say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and she's set to travel to Taco Bell's test kitchen this week to show off her ideas. What are you most excited for about this entire project? I think it'll be really fun to see it roll out. Taco Bell has yet to announce when and where her Crunchwrap Supreme will be served. But she's using this time to refine her recipes. My brain is always creating. And celebrate this success. Cheers. Avery Everett. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. KSAT 12 News. Ooh, I want to taste it. I, like I said before, that's my favorite item on the menu. Really? You like the Mexican pizza, right? Mexican pizza, that's my old favorite. <sighs> You know what? A lot of people are going to be eating takeout this weekend because <laughs> they're going to be camping also. Yes, yes some right? folks camping out and uh, others who just you know they're cooking on Sunday don't want to cook on Saturday. Yeah. And whatnot. Uh, it will be turning warmer, a little more spring-like. If you have the barbecue grill ready to go, you'll be A-OK. -okay. Just a little bit of morning dampness with fog and mist pretty much every morning all the way into next Monday. So it does include Easter Sunday. But then a Monday night cold front changes everything again and resets our weather a bit. So let's start with our dew point trend and notice how dew points are on the rise. I mean, we'll be in the 60s by Saturday, so feeling the humidity and then very humid uh, with dew points pushing 70 by Sunday and especially into Monday, but then that Monday night cold front sweeps away that humidity. Now, we can of course blame the wind that's coming off the Gulf of Mexico. A little breezy out there this evening, not 
overwhelming, not problematic, but you notice the breeze if you're outdoors for any period of time. Gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour and tomorrow we could have a few gusts between 25 and 30 miles per hour, but it's the direction of the wind. Yes, it's going to be a little breezy, but the wind off the Gulf is what boosts our moisture and gives us that added humidity in the air. So not only will we feel it, but also I do think we're going to see it in the sense of morning fog and morning fog is going to be a trend starting tomorrow morning and every day all the way through Monday. And even our computer model is now picking up on that, especially in and around Bear County, then up I-35 as well. For a period of time during the morning commute, visibilities could easily dip down to a half a mile or even slightly less. That's going to be the case just through 9 a.m. Then we clear out and we'll have a lot of sunshine tomorrow on your Good Friday. At sunrise 55, noon 73, 79 the high temperature and not really muggy tomorrow, but that humidity really kicks in as we get into Saturday in terms of really noticing that muggy feel and spring like feel near 80 all across the board tomorrow. This weekend mornings will be in the 60s and afternoons are back in the 80s. So a little above average with that humidity temperatures in the 80s. A bit of a spring like feel if you ask me and just keep in mind Easter Sunday morning. Early morning plans outdoors, a little damp just as a result of fog and mist, but no real rain to wash out any plants. And look at our temperature trend here going forward. I mentioned that Monday night cold front that arrives. That'll take us from the mid 80s back down into the lower 70s for the afternoon highs and morning lows will dip back down into the 40s. So don't put the sweatshirts or jackets away quite yet. Of course we need rain. Look at the drought monitor and we still have the severe and extreme drought, especially Northwest Bear County into the hill country. This hasn't changed much even despite some light splash and dash showers, not enough to be drought denting. And of course the drought monitor updated every Thursday. So this is the latest. Now, as you look at the entire state of Texas, most of the drought, we've got the worst situation in our neck of the woods and only about a quarter of the state is considered in drought at this time. Our next system, that's this pinwheel here, that swirl you see moved into Seattle and Portland. That's going to push our way and give us a shot at a few showers and storms by Monday night. That's our only opportunity. And unfortunately, it's only at 30% right now. But as we get into next week, look at those morning temperatures, Steph. We're, I mean, we're back down into the mid to upper 40s by Wednesday and Thursday. So kids at the bus stop, you'll need the sweatshirt or light jacket again for the middle part of next week. The yo-yo continues in our temperature trend. Oh well, yeah, and here's a live look at our live cam right now. 67 degrees out there. Decent night. And baseball's back. Baseball is back and in a big way for the Texas Rangers in Arlington. They unveiled their new banner hanging from the Raptors and luckily they were able to break it in with a win on opening day. It was a nail biter though. Plus the Davenport girls soccer team is unstoppable this postseason. Two clean sheets en route to the area championship highlights after the break. Crazy! I didn't know how many people was gonna be um, be here, um, but I'm glad everybody you know here to su support me and came to see me. So it's dope. Not as much now, but when I was younger, I, yeah, I used to I used to kill Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> Malachi Branham had 17 points off the bench in the Spurs win last night. Hours later, he's meeting fans on the far west side of San Antonio, giving out autographs and free tacos. Well, the Texas Rangers 2023 World Series championship banner now hangs from the rafters at Globe Life Field. What makes it even sweeter? It's the first in franchise history. Texas hosting the Chicago Cubs on opening day, hoping to become the first team since the Yankees 24 seasons ago to go back to back. Here's the final from a back and forth game that didn't finish until the top of the hour. The Rangers win in 10 innings, 5 to 4. Rangers Travis Jankowski homered in the bottom of the ninth to force extras. And Jonah Himes, RBI single, brought in the game winning run with bases juice. The Rangers are 1 and 0. Bench coach turned manager Joe Espada and the Houston Astros hosting Juan Soto 
and the New York Yankees on opening day. The Astros started the game off strong with three two out RBIs in the bottom of the first inning and a solo bomb by Jake Myers to start the second. Although the Yankees would score five unanswered. And in the bottom of the ninth, Kyle Tucker singers to right. Marcio Dubon trying to tie the game, but Soto throws him out at home. What a great throw. And the Yankees win the first game of four, five to four. Pitching wasn't too poor for Houston, but they allowed nine walks and eight hits. The two rematch tomorrow at 7-10. After an 8 0 performance in the by district title game, the Davenport girls soccer team takes on Floresville in the Class 4A area championship. The Wolves led by five at halftime in the second half. Emily Chabot one bounces the ball into the bottom left corner. Davenport up 6 0. Soon after, off a corner kick, Riley Reisdorf whiffs on the first try, but the captain stays with it and goes top left corner with the left foot and the Wolves win the area championship with another clean sheet 9-0. It is so exciting. I mean, we've worked from this from day one. We are such a team. We have we're all best friends and at practice we put in our best work and then we come out here and we just show what we have. Like, yeah, we can score a lot of goals, but I mean, it's just working together and not just being selfish and just making sure that we execute them well. So when it comes time for the harder games, we know like the situation to expect. Awesome. All right. Ahead of a doubleheader this afternoon, the Our Lady of the Lakes softball team held a doggy day and head coach Bruce Lennington honored four year senior and the Saints most valuable dog Gus. Gus was given his doggy bone diploma. So, so cute. As for the game, the number one Saints bats were booming early and often as Natalie Rodriguez hits an RBI double to bring Cassandra Valdez home in the bottom of the first. In the bottom of the second, Kayla Dries drives in and Ellie Garza with an RBI single. The Saints run rule the Jaguars in the fifth inning, eight nothing the final over Houston Victoria. After the break, Devin Vassell continues to be a rock for the Spurs. Devin Vassell recorded his 18th 25 plus point game of the season last night after dropping 31 points and going four for eight from three to lead San Antonio to victory 118 to 111 over the Jazz. Victor Wembanyama added 19 points and five blocks while three other Spurs had 17 points apiece to help San Antonio stay the course after getting out to a 24 to eight lead in Utah. Vassell received praise from head coach Greg Popovich after the game for being a quote monster on both ends of the court. Being a defensive anchor behind Wembenyama and Jeremy Sohan is an area of Vassell's game the 23 year old prides himself on. Just trying to be a leader out there um, on both ends of the floor. You know, uh, I talked about it earlier in the season where I just want to be kind of that defensive anchor. You know, we have Vic. Um, Jeremy's been playing great on the defensive end. You know, TJ's picking up full court, Blake. And, um, you know, I want to be that next guy. I want to be somebody who's picking up and uh, just being disruptive. So uh, defensive end, I've just really been trying to anchor that. And then offensively, you know, coach has been, I, I say all the time, coach puts me in a great position to get downhill, get to my spots, pick them apart. You know, if they're trapping me, I can hit uh, the short roll or the skip or whoever it is. And they've been knocking down shots. Kai came in and knocked down some big shots. Um, so it was all, all in a great night for a bunch of people. It was a great team effort, great team win. We'll see if they can win three straight against the Knicks Biggest tomorrow. First. But you know what I like about this? We're finally talking about what they're doing right. Yes. And for a while it was like, oh, it's a young team. Exactly. Now, out. now, reaping the benefits. We're getting into a groove. Yes. I like it. I'll be right back. <laughs> And let's not forget 11 days until mm -hmm. the total solar eclipse. Now, this is a total solar eclipse, so ips, it, blah, blah, you know what I mean? If you're in the path of totality, there will be a short period of time you can take off your glasses. Ksat.com for the latest. Walk us through that. Have yep. a good night.